Well, we've just said goodbye to everyone else at the airport and I thought I'd better do an intro because we're straight into the hairpin. Um, we're going to start the next leg of our trip now. Um, I'm going to try and keep this to mostly the snakes and the cool lizards and things that we found. I'm not going to film every gecko and skink and things because we found a lot of those um, that I've probably put in the trip report video. So yeah, I thought I'd better do an intro before everything gets chaotic and we're going to hit the road, do some road cruising, check some wells and see what we can find. Well, I wasn't going to do much of a piece of camera because we've all seen Tarantola more in Tanaka before. But just while we're on the way back to the cars to get the, the proper cameras, I thought I'd show them. So that's the first species. Not a rare one, but it's nice to get off the board. That's uh, the Mori Gecko is a common name. And we found this one in a well along with uh, a Gama Bibrinae, which I'll show you in a second. Well, again, I wasn't going to do a huge bit of footage, but as soon as we found it in a well, we've actually managed to get one of these in hand, which is quite rare. This is Bibrin's Agama, Agama Bibrinae. Um, and this is one of the little diurnal oviparous agamins that you find up here in Morocco. And this one lays a couple of clutches a year, two to three clutches a year of about five to ten eggs. Um, like I said, they operate diurnally. They can be found out basking in the middle of the day. But because this one's been quite cold, this is a, an adult male. They do get a little bit bigger than this, but this is an adult male. Quite drab because, like I say, we found him down a well and for that reason he's quite cold. So we're going to get this one back now, but I just thought I'd show him to you. These agamas quickly became the most abundantly seen lizard on the trip, and at this time of year they could be seen basking throughout even the hottest hours of the day. The diet of these lizards consists of vegetation, invertebrate and vertebrate prey items. Interestingly, marked seasonality has been shown in the prey of this species in western Morocco. Ants and termites make up an increased proportion of their diet in summer months, and plants seem of less importance as a food source than they are in the colder months. Okay, so we've just... Uh said goodbye to the other guys at the airport and we've started the next leg of our trip and we've just found the first snake by checking a well um, Balan got this horseshoe whip snake, Hemorrhoes hippocrepis and this is actually one of the few snakes that isn't a first for me because I have actually found this species in Portugal um, and we've taken a little bit of time photographing this snake so we're going to get it back first but I thought I'd just show you it on video it's one of the fast moving diurnal snakes you find in this region we've actually seen a few on the road um, but lost them uh, of course so this one was in a well so we've actually managed to get this um, and it's nice to get the trip started. This is actually the one you find north um, of the Atlas Mountains and then Hemorrhoes Algiris you find south. Um, but yeah, we'll get this one back and crack on. We were actually at the southern extent of this species range in Morocco and like I mentioned, any further south and we'd be finding the Algerian witch snakes in their place. These snakes are generally crepuscular or nocturnal, especially in summer. However, as we were still in spring, we've been seeing them in the daytime in Crescent Roads as the temperature wasn't too high. Due to their abundance and their ability to thrive in man-made environments such as walls, houses and ruins, horseshoe whip snakes are unfortunately a common candidate for use by snake charmers in Morocco, so it was nice to rescue and release this one from the well. I didn't film much for a while at this point, as we were keen to check all the wells we could to ensure no animals were left stuck down any of them. Well, I didn't actually do a bit to camera because it got a little bit chaotic, so I thought at this point in the video I'd patch in some footage of a stretch of road we've just done in the sun where we got a lot of uh, Euromastix nigroventris which is fast becoming my favourite lizard we've, we've seen these big bright orange agamas sitting on top of rocks in, in the middle of the day basking in the heat and uh, as soon as you even get the car near them they just vanish but I did manage to get a bit of in situ footage so I'll pop that in here because at the moment we're still road cruising and um, yeah anything else we, we see we'll bring it to you and I'll pop that Euromastix footage in now because they're awesome this species is Euromastix nigriventris, the Moroccan spiny-tailed lizard. This species exhibits a variety of colours and patterns, with red, orange, green and yellow individuals being sighted throughout Morocco. These lizards are diurnal and spend a lot of their time sat on rock piles either just outside or very near their burrow, and even so much as dropping the car window or opening a car door will send them sprinting off into their hole. Once they've reached refuge, they will inflate themselves to make them more wedged in and point their spiny tail outwards to block the entrance for any potential predator. These lizards are oviparous and females lay multiple clutches of up to 23 eggs per year. This species feeds largely on plants, with invertebrates making up a small percentage of their diet. While cruising the road looking at Euromastix, we managed to spot, film and photograph a Bomesagama, Drapellus bohemii, a first for all of us on the trip. The Bomesagama is smaller and less commonly sighted than Bibronsagama, and seem to occupy flatter, more open habitats where they deploy excellent camouflage among the pebbles and rocks, both when basking in the day and sleeping in the open at night. These lizards are also diurnal and oviparous, and females lay multiple clutches of 5 to 12 eggs each year. 
This was one of our favourite lizard finds and we spent a few minutes getting some pictures before moving on. After this we stopped and had a walk around some rocky escarpments above a stream in search of more snakes and it wasn't long before we found our next species. Okay, so we've just got another snake. We stopped and um, had a little bit of a look around, hoping to find something like Cerastes. Um, but I've just managed to find this Somophis shockeri, four scale sand snake. Uh, and it was just flying through a hole in one of these walls. And I managed to jump the wall and get it on the other side, which is lucky. This is one of the fast moving diurnal snakes of Morocco. They're quite an abundant snake south of the Atlas, where we are here. They're a rarer snake north of the Atlas Mountains. Um, they're an oviparous snake. They lay five to six eggs and that, that'll happen in autumn. So these guys will be flying around feeding up before mating right now. And they are Opistoglyphus, which is a dentition which has those rear fangs and they do actually have a venom to them. But there's nothing to worry about. But because we've got this guy out in the sun and because I saw him in the sun and we've done this clip, uh, we're going to get him back really quick because we don't want him to heat up in this sun. But nice snake. As you can see in this release clip, this snake was actually in the process of shedding its skin and so its vision and reflexes were not as good as they would be usually, which probably explains this capture. Despite this, the snake did not attempt to bite at any point, which is consistent with the documented temperament of this species. After this we continued south, stopping only to check wells and to identify this unfortunately dead specimen of Malpolon moilensis, the false cobra, which was sad but a good sign that they were moving and in the area. We're just checking some wells down here in the south of Morocco, in the western Sahara actually. And after that we're going to cruise the road and see if we can spot any Euromastix disbar out basking. I thought I'd better just say as well, I know I say in a lot of my videos the importance of, of not catching and grabbing things and leaving things in situ. But I thought I'd just better say two of the places that we're finding and catching things in this scenario is on the road, road cruising. And in these wells, uh, like you can see behind me, and that's two places in Morocco where uh, reptiles will die. So it's better for us to handle them and, and take them out than it is for them to starve or drown in a well or get squished on the road. So I think it's the, the lesser of two evils. So please don't give me any hate in the comments for any handling you see us doing. A lot of the herping around here entails searching in these wells because a lot of reptiles Amphibians and mammals too will fall down into these wells and they won't be able to get out so it's worth coming down having a good look and seeing if we can rescue any what's inside. Once we checked all the wells we carried on to the accommodation as we were keen to get out road cruising that night. Just uh, trying to rally the Sandero through the desert and then we'll be there. This is tonight's accommodation. At Fort Bougerif, if I'm saying that right. I absolutely love it. Getting a bit of camping influence in the herping trip, which is great. And then we've got a shower tent around the back and a little toilet place. Can't wait. So we're going to get the kit in and then we're going to get out road cruising. Well, the first species we've spotted on the road cruise isn't the snake at all, but it's this little Mediterranean chameleon, Chameleo chameleon. And um, we spotted this one in pretty typical fashion. They tend to stand out quite well from the bushes they sit on at night, they tend to glow quite a lot. Um, these are an introduced species where I've previously seen them in Europe but here they're actually meant to be here I believe and these will have multiple partners of females, they'll have multiple male partners as possible and they'll lay 5 to 12 eggs underground. Um, the males can actually be, I'm just blowing them out a bit there, the males can be quite territorial during mating season, uh, they'll fight and they'll also guard the females which is quite interesting. And as we spotted this one, um, the team is just photographing another one over there. So it's a pretty good start to, uh, um, to the night. Just going to take some pictures and carry on. This is the other chameleon, I just thought I'd do a bit of footage of him. This one's a little bit nicer. And again, you can see in the head touch, you might not be able to pick this up, but you, you can pick them out quite easily from the road by car. They do sort of glow in a different way to the tree leaves. But yeah. Just going to take some shots and carry on. Quite interesting things and nice to see them in their native range um, instead of the one I've seen in Portugal which was introduced. The road cruise was pretty quiet snake wise but we did find a little Senegal sand skink crossing the road. These little skinks are nocturnal and at night they move through the sand using their well adapted sand swimming form of locomotion. 
However, that did look very much like a small snake when crossing tarmac, so we did get quite excited briefly. The next species we found was a target, the helmet head gecko, Tarantola chazelliae. This stockily built gecko can be found continually along the Moroccan coast south of Agadir. They're a nocturnal species that feeds on ants and other invertebrates, and females lay multiple clutches of either one or two eggs each year. This was the last find of the night and wrapped up a great herping session in Morocco, a country I'm sure I'll be returning to soon.